Hi, my name is Al Gettler and welcome back to Leader Be Led. We are so glad you're here with us. We'd like you to help us spread the word about Leader Be Led, certainly share the links, certainly make comments on our website page, on our YouTube page. We want you to participate. We want you to be part of the community here at Leader Be Led. Now, one of the great things I get to do as host of the show is I get to invite people who I really admire. And I admire people with great creativity, people who make a difference, people who have ideas and bring those ideas down to places and ways that you, you can't even imagine how they've come up with some of the things they've come up with. I was a great admirer of Muppeteer Jim Henson and what he created. Never had a chance to meet him, but I'm really happy today that I get a chance to meet, even by Skype, this guy who I've admired uh, his work from afar, and I'm so thrilled to have a conversation with him today. He comes to us from Miami, Florida. His name is Hugh McLeod, and he is a cartoonist who boils ideas down into small spaces with huge impact. Hugh, welcome to the show. Hello there. How are you? I am doing really well. Now, Hugh, we can find your work at uh, gapingvoid.com, correct? That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. And you put out a daily email that just, I got to tell you, uh, I look forward to that in my inbox. I get depressed when it's not there by the end of the day. <laughs> Sometimes you surprise me, you send it at night, and I'm cool with that as long as I get my Gaping Void cartoon. Uh, and it just, it absolutely blows me away how you boil yeah. things down. So, um, Hugh, first of all, tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us your background, and then we'll get into Gaping Void and what Gaping Void is all about. Yeah, well, uh, let's say I'm a cartoonist, obviously. Um, my background is in advertising. And uh, anyways, to make, to make a long story short, I kind of, when the internet came along, I realized there was a new game in town. Uh-huh. And so what I started doing was I started posting my cartoons on my blog, gapingboy.com, and uh and I guess I built up a following over over the years. That was 1991. I launched GapingVoid.com. No, 19. No, sorry, 2001. Okay. Okay. I, I launched GapingVoid, and then uh, then eventually I started working together with my now business partner, uh, Jason Corman. Well, and, you you also though have you've blended something in, into your work today with this entrepreneurial uh, message, this leadership message. So where does that fit into all of this? Well, if you're a cartoonist, you have a small business yourself because that's what a, a cartoonist is. A cartoon studio is basically a, a small business. And you have the same trials and tribulations as any other small business and the same doubts and the same fears and the same issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also... You know, if you look, if you look at what most cartoonists write about, they write about their girlfriends. They write about Obama, and it's you know, yeah, yeah, you know, how, how much do you want to write about that? Yeah, <laughs> you know, right, right. What every other cartoonist is writing about, uh, you know, life. You know, if you're, I mean, read any newspapers, fairly the same kind of stuff day in day out. And, and actually, there aren't that many cartoonists writing really interesting stuff about business, and which to me is weird because business A is very interesting, and, and B. So many of us are in that position of business where we have to, you know, we have to make payroll. Yeah. And we, yeah. And, we ha- and especially now with the internet, we really, really have to know how to create value. I mean, we can't just show up to work every morning and just expect a paycheck. So, we, you know, we're all kind of under the gun. Right. And, and so that's what I channel into because – and it's funny because we have a lot of – a lot of our clients are big companies, you know. Like we've done stuff with Hewlett Packard and we've done stuff with Intel and we've done – doing stuff with Rush – pharmaceuticals right now and they have had the same problem you know yeah it's like oh my god we've got to create value oh my god how are we going to do that i mean how <laughs> and whether it's just you and your rolodex or whether it's you and your big company and you're just part of a team it's the same it's the same gun and those and they you know and it's the same kind of hopes and fears and doubts and it's a really rich vein yeah yeah uh and and so i just and so i just write about my life but but I and I just don't think many people have done that before, really. I mean, there there's Dilbert. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Dilbert. Yeah. Oh, but right. but Dil, Dilbert's like, okay, so you hate your job, you hate your boss, and it's funny because Dilbert the character, you know, and Dilbert the uh, comic strip are actually the same thing, the same stuff every day. Right. You know, it's the same. It's the same wheel. Here we go around the wheel one more time. Right. Silly meetings, stupid boss, silly clients, stupid sales meetings. And it's like 20 years later, 
he's still there, yeah. and the comic strip's still there. Right. It hasn't, and neither one has developed at all. It's the same. It's the same, and uh, and I, and I know in the syndicate market, you have to do that because once you, once they, once you've nailed down your formula, you're by you know by contract obliged to keep it going. Well, and your and your illustrations are entirely different every day, and sometimes there's characters, sometimes there's not. In fact, we've grabbed a video that we'd like to show everybody to give you an appreciation of what Hugh does. And uh, you, you and I get to sit back and relax for a few minutes and, and watch yeah. this video uh, on your work on entrepreneurship. So we can roll that video, please. Yeah, that is great stuff. Absolutely great mm -hmm. stuff. You know, you have some messages there that um, that a lot of people in management and leadership mm -hmm. are afraid to tell the people that work for them. You had one that says, fail, fail, fail. And um, tell us a bit about that cartoon. Well, well it's this idea that the, the, the way you have real innovation is by lots of experiments. If you look at the scientific method, it's trying lots of different experiments, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. Uh, you know, amassing evidence and and testing and testing it, and this idea that uh, if you're not trying, if you're not trying new stuff, and you look at you look at like a really successful company like Apple, right? Mm -hmm. They try they try new stuff internally a lot. They try a lot of different. You know, will this work on a five inch screen? Will it work on a three inch screen? Will it work on a two inch screen? You know. Um, you know, the iPhone was actually, they, they tried they tried inventing a tablet first, and then they said, hey, this would actually, if this is smaller, it would make a great phone as well. So they they actually ended up bringing out the phone. And and so that, that's the innovative, that's the innovator's dilemma. It's like, if you, if you do stuff that only succeeds, you will fail eventually. Yeah. And yeah. you do stuff that fails, it will succeed eventually. And and and, uh, and that, that's why, that's why, in a, that's why, uh, that's why all great innovations, not all great innovations, but like so many great innovations come from startups because, you know, if, if the idea fails, well, you blew 50 grand. It's not like if General Motors fails, it blows 5 billion. Right. And, 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 and it's not just abstract money. There are a lot of jobs and families and people, and, you know, who have to like pull their kids out of private school or whatever, sell the second car or whatever. You know, I mean, a lot of, it's not abstract money. Real families, real lives are affected when you fail. But if it's just if it's just a bunch of you know a couple of twenty six year old kids in San Francisco who just lost 50, 50 grand of their parents' money, well, they can recover from that. Yeah, but even in a big company, I mean, you can put you can put aside a, a pot of, of cash to fail. And I think the point of your artwork, uh, or the point at least of that one particular cartoon, is 
try and fail, and then you're going to create. Um, you know, the, the, the artwork that you do, um, you know, I have a business card here. I'll talk about these in a minute. But okay. the, the drawings that you do, are, are, they, any, are they much bigger than, than this? Like, what, do you, what, is it, what is it that you draw on? How do you draw your artwork? Well, I draw most, well, I got my start drawing little originals on the back of business cards using an old-fashioned, you know, ink pen. So is that how you got started by, by that, drawing? Yeah, and I still do that. And then, and then now, because that stuff doesn't replicate to prints very well, I draw on a, on a uh, medium-sized uh, tablet PC using, you know, drawing software. So oh, it's okay. fairly... But I, I try to keep it as simple as I can. I don't, I don't have like the, I don't have a fancy state of the art, you know, like Wacom kind of 24 HD 24. It's just like a little kind of motion computing, you know, uh, Microsoft XP. It's very old fashioned, old school device, I guess. Well, but simplicity is really what what your message is about. I mean, high impact, yeah. high impact drawing, simple, but yet the message is just. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, literally, some days your messages blow me away. In fact, we have some cartoons um, that we've downloaded that I just uh, thought we'd spend a few minutes talking about, and maybe you can explain some of the thought press process behind those. So let's, okay. let's bring the first one up on the screen and, uh, and, and talk about some of these cartoons. Uh, I am not uh, delusional. I'm an entrepreneur. So what's, what's your message there? I mean, I get it, but let me, let me hear your <laughs> message. It's just this idea when you're an when you're entrepreneur, when you decide to break away from the safe paycheck, you have no idea whether you're going to fail or not. And it seems like you're going to try to bring something new into the world without any kind of guarantee. And that's usually the uh, sign of a madman. <laughs> yeah, yeah at, least, so, at least in the eyes of your in-laws, right? <laughs> exactly, especially in the eyes of the in-laws. And so when you take a risk, why can't you just get a nice safe job at like, you know, 3M or yeah. you know, Sherwin-Williams or whatever? Right. Right. And say, yeah, but I'm trying to build a thing, a personal computer. What's a personal computer? They don't have those at IBM. You know uh, what I mean? And so you have this kind of like, you, you kind of, anytime you break new ground, you're going to have resistance because new ideas, good ideas, change the uh, power balance in relationships. Outstanding. Let's see the next cartoon. Allergic to boredom. That would be me. Yeah, that, that, that's nothing fancy or clever. That's just like a kind of t-shirt design I did. Uh -huh. They said, look, I'm allergic to boredom. You're going to bore me. Go away. I don't, I don't care. You know, it's like, I'm not one of these guys. One of the reasons I got out of advertising, I realized in order to, above a certain level in the company hierarchy, you, you don't actually spend much time changing the world. You spend just a lot of your time going to meetings and right. just talking about minutiae until you're blue in the face. And I didn't want to do that, so I got out. But, so. you know, there are times, too, and I look at your, at your, at your drawings, and I, I think I see a pattern. And then there are times when I don't see a pattern. So tell me a bit about just, you know, the, the, uh, the border around the oh. words that you've written. Well, that's me with a very highly uh, developed sense of doodling. I've always doodled. And uh, so I, instead of, like, trying to suppress my doodling, because, you know, you know, doodling in the margins... Uh -huh. I decided actually one, well, my, my, my doodling style is actually fairly distinctive. So why don't you make that part of the trademark? And, and and so that's what and and so uh, that that goes back to college when I was drawing uh, college strips for the, the school paper. And I noticed, and what I do, I start with a big stack of paper and just doodle for a while till I got an idea, and then I'd go and try to draw something using the same kind of formal rules as like newspaper cartooning, which is what we had back then. Right. Right. And I just noticed that the actual doodle drawings were way more interesting than the finished product. So I said, well, I just said, okay, I'll just get rid of the, the I'll just get rid of the finished product and keep the interesting bits in. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the next cartoon. So this one, uh, this is one where I opened up your daily email and, you know, I walked around the house, the, the everywhere I wa wa you know, went and showed them this cartoon. I mean, uh, you, uh, this is one where, you know, being in leadership positions for as long as I have over the years, you nailed this. But would you give it your explanation behind what you're trying to say with this cartoon? Yeah, well, you, you kind of have the kind of, on the left, you have the Apollo, the, 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 the ideal of Apollo. And then on the right, you have the, the mess of Dionysus. In other <laughs> words, you have, from the outside, it looks like, you know, you're sitting on top of King of the Hill looking, you know, looking in c control of the situation. 
when in fact in the middle when you're in the middle of it it's a big old it's a big old mess and you're just trying to like handle it you know it's like you're just like you're just like trying to you're just you're just dodging bullets you know the what you know what they call the fog of war you're in the middle of a hurricane you're the eye you're you not even the eye of the hurricane you're just like a piece of driftwood in the hurricane <laughs> yeah yeah and you either and it's very up and down and you have a very, you either have a temperament for it. You know what I notice about like entrepreneurs? What's that? Is they're actually quite, once they get away from their office, they're actually quite dull. You know what I mean? They live right. in the suburbs and they drive ordinary cars and they're, 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 they <laughs> tend to stay married to the same woman because, you know what, if their lives are all chaos. Yeah. Like, you know, different women and, you know, hipster apartments and all that, you know, lots of, you know, alcohol and drug abuse and all that. They wouldn't be able to like, handle the to have that kind of chaos in their private lives and also the chaos of the of being an entrepreneur they, they'd implode yeah so so most 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 entrepreneurs i know are you know if you see them away from the office they're kind of you know they watch tv hey you know i'm going to interrupt this interview with hugh mcleod because i tell you he's such a creative guy he has so many great ideas and so many things to tell you that we're going to cut this interview into two pieces to respect your time and to also make sure that you get all of hugh's great creativity, and great thoughts. So join us next time for part two of my interview with Hugh McLeod of gapingvoid.com. See you next time.